Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the eighth in CSW Group series of webinars, Inspiring Futures. So this is a series we're running in conjunction with the Careers and Enterprise Company, and each webinar is covering a different topic, um, which will be something to do either with career thinking, employability, or how to transfer successfully into the world of work. So today we'll be hearing from my colleague, career development consultant, Mike Shale, and he's going to be delivering a talk on um, all about me, my skills and personal qualities. As you're listening, um, you will notice there is a question and answer box in Zoom. So if you have any live questions, please feel free to enter them there and time permitting, we'll deal with as many as we can at the end. And um, without further ado, I will hand you over to Mike. Thank you, Ollie. Afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Hope it's bright and cheerful where you are. It is where I am. So, uh, yeah, all about me. Well, all about um, yourselves is how this is, is going to be, isn't it? Uh, your skills and personal qualities. Um, first sort of thing we need to be thinking about when we think about ourselves and certainly with the idea of getting into the world of work and things like that is um, that, that whole thing about what are our strengths? You know, what are our successes? because those sort of things are things to celebrate and share and shout about and certainly help get us noticed by our next training provider or our next employer. Uh, and sometimes even the environment we're in where we are now, where we go, yay, I'm good at this. And it is, it's, it's finding ways to, to shout about it. Um, it's not always easy to do that sort of stuff. I get that. Um, but this, hopefully this session will start you thinking about how you could be highlighting your strengths, how you could uh, recognize your successes um, and then, you know, gives you a starting point to start thinking about how you can share that with, with other people, because that's sometimes the, um, the icky bit in it, the funny bit is like, how do I tell them how good I am? How do I tell them what I've achieved? Something we're certainly mindful of and need to think about as well is, is definitely that thing about um, how, how we're feeling, you know, how are you feeling? Uh, is, is, you know, even in this session, it's like a matter of, am I actually ready to focus and listen and think, you know? Um, sometimes it can be difficult. So give yourselves a moment just to think, you know, how am I feeling? Are, are things all right? Could it be better or whatever? Because, um, you know, it's, things haven't been great the, the last year for most people, been a bit different. Um, and, and so sometimes recognising how we are is, is, is a really critical thing. And it's always been a critical thing, to be fair. Uh, but certainly the promotion of mental health is, is, a, is, a, is a good thing uh, to actually help support us all achieving the best we can. OK, so just, just a thought about that. And also always worth thinking about that uh, before you start to attempt things, you know, it's like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling ready for it? What could you do different? On that sort of thought then, you know, um, feelings, things, are, we're here considering options for the future, what to do next. That's going to be a change. And some of, I think it's worth thinking about is, yeah, how do you want to feel about that sort of change, you know? What sort of... Um, Emotions do you want to go through? Is it do you want to be a positive, happy, upbeat thing? Do you want to be somewhere else? You know, uh, that's the sort of thing we think about. Is future change is going to happen, and how do you want to feel about it? The other thing to give yourself time to think about is that how you might be feeling doing something different or new. What processes might you be going through? How can you get there? What's going to happen? Okay, visualizing, thinking about these things is is, is something worth doing because. There's always new things on the horizon, always something different to get involved in if we want. And if we have a moment about how we're going to feel about it, how do we want to feel, that's going to set us in a good stead to actually achieve the best we can and get the most out of it as well. Because it's not just about giving, is it? It's about having something back. It's a good old two-way street sort of stuff. Okay. Right. So uh, whatever you are, you know, these are the sort of uh, main options you've got open to you, aren't they? Um, those things called apprenticeships. Uh, those things called college, uh, a job with training could be a thing, uh, and sick form, okay? All these different uh, options there for you. And, and as the graphics got, it's just a, a couple of questions uh, for you to be thinking about. And that is, um, where should I go? <laughs> if there are choices, where should I go? You know, so if that's the case, what research is going to help? What sort of information is going to be useful for you to get? about those places, about how they might make you feel, for example, that's going to benefit you, okay? So that's the thing to be thinking about. Put some thought and effort into that, that next step, that transition, that change, and, and try and make it the best you can. So research is going to help. 
not necessarily just on, on the screen, but talking to people. If, my goodness, if it's allowed, visiting the places. Yeah, that's coming on the horizon. It actually get into places. Yay. So hopefully there'll be a chance to see things in real in real world as well. And talk to people maybe been through that experience. Yeah. So research effort, putting that, that effort in there to help yourself. Any option is possible. Absolutely. Any option is possible. It could be that there's, you know, you, you might think there's, there's barriers and problems in the way, in which case it is about going back to, well, who else can help me? Who else can I ask? How can I get there? That looks interesting. I feel like it's going to be a good place for me. Who's going to help me achieve it? So any option is possible. It's about putting that, that thought into it and getting the help and, and um, yeah, seeing what happens. OK. So th this question. What do we mean by employability and success? It's a funny old word, word I think, employability. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's about what skills have you got that are going to mean that you're going to get a job? <laughs> you know, that someone's going to say, hey, you, we'll give you some money for that. OK, and also success, because we've all got different ideas about success, haven't we? So this is sort of what it is. Giving yourself a chance to consider what skills you've got that are going to help you in that next step, yeah? What have you got that's going to help you be successful in what you do? Put in some effort, some time, some investment, yeah? Not necessarily money, but time and thought and, and actual personal stuff into developing those skills. You know, you're thinking, oh, yeah, that skill is something I got. I could do, I could do better than that. How can I do it? Put, put some effort into it um, to, to give yourself that better future. And certainly that idea of success is, you know, everyone's got different ambitions. Thank goodness. If you had the same, it'd be a, be a right old trouble. No, if you had the same, same target, everyone's got different varieties, different ambitions of what they want to do and what counts as success. So think about that amongst yourselves and what qualities and traits you've got that are going to increase your chances of your success. OK, that's the sort of things we're thinking about. Your skills, your abilities, who you are, how you can improve those to give yourself the best chance the best experiences right then thinking of skills this is something i always think is super super valuable to do is when we're getting into the world of work it's not just about what we want to give and get out of it it's, it's actually what the employer is able to give and they get out of it as well so thinking here a bit of a, a thought time an activity what are the most desirable skills or qualities employers look for yeah, if you think about getting into the world of work, have a think about what are those skills that employers look for. So have a moment, have a think. If you want to write some down, that, that'd be good. And I'll have a list in a bit. What do employers want? Yeah, bit of thought there, bit, bit of a, a few ideas. Here we go, list coming up. So this list is actually from that, yeah, the Future of Jobs report. So a couple of years ago, but it's still current, still relevant, absolutely. The ideas they might not quite match some of that words you may have put down. You might put down, you know, communication, teamwork, that sort of thing. I don't make any apology for, for the sort of um, complexity, I suppose, of the words that are, are on here, because this is where the world's moving with growing skills needed to be effective in the world of work. So we've got stuff in there, you know, to say analytical, which is basically thinking about stuff, you know, about active learning, creativity, uh, but actually a bit more than just creativity, originality, something new, initiative, that spark. Who are you to actually put yourself forward to say, yeah, I can do that or I want to do that, which is sometimes even more important than I can do it. It's like I want to do it, that, that desire to do things. So, yeah, this is like the, the growing skills in, in the world at the moment. If we have a look at just uh, one of them. Which one is it? Yeah, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. What the heck is that? Well, that's actually that whole idea of being able to manage and control our emotions and, and help them and work them in a positive way. So they were helping maybe other people actually maybe uh, communicating in effective ways so that people can understand uh, our point of view and we can think about their point of view. That empathy is really important as well. And it's, it's about just you know, sh sharing ways to, to achieve stuff as, as a human being, I suppose, is what it is, because it's, you know, emotions are, are pretty much what help, help make us human. But emotional intelligence definitely needed in the world of work. Right, couple of facts. 
you're probably aware of these, but I'm just highlighting them. Um, people change jobs over their lifetime. My goodness, yes, they do. Uh, the likelihood that, that the job you start with after, you know, age 16 or 18 or 21, whatever it may be, um, if that's going to be the job that you end up when you retire, highly unlikely. Yeah, the, the most likely thing is people change jobs, either, you know, as I said, get promotions, maybe, or um, unfortunately, as I've experienced in the last you know, year or so, increasingly redundancy jobs ending, whatever. And then we have to change. We have to uh, find different things to do. Um, that fact that change happens, okay? So the change happens to companies. Change happens to us as individuals. We pick up new skills, we pick up new ideas, pick up new experiences, okay? Uh, and the other fact there, what have we got there? COVID has changed how people can work. Really? Yeah, absolutely, really. Because um, you look at like, the retail world, hospitality world, um, what I'm doing now, you know, so many companies now are using things like, you know, webinars, online stuff to connect, not only with their customers, but also with their team, the actual people that are delivering, sharing ideas uh, in the virtual world has massively changed, okay? And it's also opened up amazing opportunities, not only for Zoom, but for, you know, other companies as well. So you, you look at, um, yeah, I know COVID specifically, medical companies, you know, they, they've had big, big increase in opportunities. So change happens and change isn't always bad. It changes definitely a uh, chance for opportunity. So, I forgot, three changes, seven changes, whatever. Certainly more than one change is what I suggest. Couple of uh, pointers down the bottom there. I've got about, um, yeah, portfolio careers. Portfolio careers is the idea that people will or can, I should say, work for more than one company, work more, more than one business. So you might be, yeah, maybe a delivery driver on, on a few days a week or certain pattern over the year. And then you've also got, a different role is, I don't know, swim coach or something. Yeah. So a variety of different things going on. Okay. Keeping your skill set wide, abroad, experiencing different things, linking in with different stuff, bringing in the money as well. Multi strand business. This is pretty much for your entrepreneurs out there thinking about, you know, uh, self employment and um, setting up a new enterprise sort of stuff. Uh, Multi strand business is the concept, is the idea of. Where does my money come in from in my business? OK, and again, it's a similar sort of thing to portfolio. It's a variety of skills bringing in the money, different uh, things you can get involved with as a self-employed person, as a business to make sure you still got, you know, roof over your head, food in your belly, all that sort of stuff. So multi-strand businesses is, is, is a thing. And the, the little tab I put at the bottom, excitement or worry. Yeah, change. Change has that effect on people, oh, nice, doesn't it? We go, oh. Gosh, what's coming my way? Or, wow, look what's coming my way, okay? And it's relevant, again, be thinking about those feelings, thinking about those emotions, about where you are with that and where you want to be with that. Because, as I said, change is a fact, okay? And it's about adapting, being alert, taking the best steps we can to make sure, you know, we're prepared for what we think is coming and even then adapting, okay? All right. Where are we? I love this quote, I do. Um, to be employed is to be at risk. To be employable is to be secure. Uh, that's from a Dr. Peter Hawkins from the, the Windmill Foundation. Uh, I think it's Manchester, way, actually. Uh, yeah, to be employed is to be at risk. To be employable is to be secure. Um, what they're getting at there is the idea that it's all well and good having a job, but what happens if things change, okay? Can your skills be used elsewhere? Have you got employability skills that mean you can continue? And as it suggests in the green bit, be adaptable to new stuff. For example, take chameleon. Yeah, chameleons out there doing whatever chameleon does. If um, if chameleons thinking, oh, I want to go to work, then well, chameleons gonna have to change. I mean, look at that. We got a walking, talking. Well, I don't know if he's talking or not, but we got a walking one. Uh, chameleon. You know, all new skills adapting to new things, so we can actually move from chameleon into the world of work. And even when you're in the world of work, sometimes you have to change to fit in. Yeah. Hey, I can do that. Look at me. So that's what we've got there. But sometimes it's also about standing out, hopefully for positive things to show that, yeah, I'm capable of doing this. Uh, and even in the, in the workplace, sometimes it's a matter of, you know, doing the community thing and just merging into the background sometimes and just getting on with it just to prove that, you're, you know, you're part of it all. Because sometimes we don't just stand out for the wrong reasons, do we? Because otherwise you might get 
checked out the door and say thank you very much for working there, you know, anymore. But if actually we're standing up for the right reasons, because we're adaptable, we've got that desire to change and do what they want, then we, we, we could, you know, keep on going and be um, secure, in the words of Dr. Peter Hawkins. So yeah, lifelong learning, work-long adaptability. We need to keep on changing. Okay, Mike, great. But how is this for me? <laughs> how can you develop that employability of being an on about? What can you do to help you become employable? And this is the idea about transferable skills, the things that we're doing in one place we could possibly do in another. Uh, and what else can you do? So again, I've got a few more pointers about other steps you could take that can help with this, this journey. So it's definitely for you, okay? Because employability, if you want some money in your pocket for working, employability uh, is, is a thing you need to be interested in, I suggest. Okay, employability. There's this sort of simplistic idea here about what employability is. Q per C per cent, adding up for the pound, pound, pounds. Um, we, we got our, our person there, you know, he looks very focused now, all ready to go. And, and so, you know, it's qualifications, sure, that's all part of it. You know, the push in the English of maths, for example, is a minimum, because we're all well aware, hopefully, that employers value the fact that if we can read as best we can, do the maths as best we can, because that, that's pretty much core skills in any job. Experience is, is ties into what we've done as well as you know, what we can do you know it's like can you do this what, what experience have you got you know talking to people wherever it may be or building a rocket pack maybe you've done that okay but there's something else missing in this it's the it's the m isn't it it's the m what the heck's the m here we go motivation i suggest motivation is a real critical thing you know because it may well be all good that you've got you know lovely qualifications great experience but if you don't want to do it it isn't really going to happen is it and if you don't want to do it, the employee is not really going to be that interested either. Why should they be? So you've got to have that oomph factor. You've got to have that fire to actually demonstrate your, your desire to, to get on and do things. OK, otherwise, he's out there staring at the horizon, nothing there. I reckon he might go somewhere, don't he? He might do. OK. It's more than qualifications, what I'm saying. So you've got, you have got qualifications for sure. Also, experience comes into it. What you've done, what you're going to do um, and motivation. Combine them all together, and pretty much that's the package, isn't it? That's what you're offering to an employer, saying, "Choose me." Uh, interesting thing, they all, you know, all these things go in different shapes and sizes: qualifications, experience, and motivation. Um, and different people have different packages, and they look different, you know, and have done different things. Good, because that means there's a variety. If we all had the same uh, experience of qualifications it'd be a limited opportunity for us all the world is diverse and crazily changed so we've got different things we can actually get involved with, with different experiences and different qualities okay so different people that's fine be yourself but make sure you share it and tell them about it so they, they can pick up on it as well this slide here yeah, talk about those skills and personal qualities now skills are those things that you know we can do that we've picked up on we've developed and and, and uh, help us achieve stuff yeah so maybe that's that it ability you've, you've got or your ability to negotiate stuff um, and even expressing opinions appropriately maybe that could be a, a very good skill you know you think like the politicians and ceos of companies and even a, a customer service person who's negotiating with, 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 a, with their customer they've got to talk appropriately they? and personal qualities is actually much more about who you are you know what what um attributes you have about yourself whether you've got that energy whether you you know social person like like get on with people or you caring or whatever and personal qualities can be enhanced and developed towards those skills for sure so that you know a, a sociable person might be the one that's good at organizing things possibly not necessarily but again just highlighting ways that who we are can be developed into skills This one's pretty critical as well, resilience. Uh, there was a session on that early in the week, I don't know if you, you missed that, but there, there's resilience is absolutely there. That's the idea that life throws us, you know, things to get past, to get over, get through. Um, and resilience is that uh, method that keep on going this, you know, to actually get through things. It might mean you have to involve other people with it. It could be that, you know, you do hit a brick wall, but then you need to take a step back. You go, what can I do to get past it? You know, I'm not there yet. Use that process. What I'm not there yet. What can I do? Who else is there? How else is there? 
resilience, keep on going. So where are we? We need to be thinking about transferable skills. And I'm saying transferable because that's the employability stuff. We're not all in the world of work, but we may want to get there. How do we do it, Mike? How do we do it? Well, we've got some ideas here. Moving from wherever we are learning, at home, at school, or wherever we happen to be, through to either self-employed, employed, and to all the, all the world of work, okay? Ste take those steps. So, um, if we think about what we do now, um, there's plenty of um, roles we get involved with. And the example I got is actually a pet carer. Yeah, you might have a pet at home or know someone's got a pet. This is just an example of how we can identify skills so that we can then share them with the world, say, look what I can do. And also share them with ourselves to say, ah, oh, I can do that, which is a great thing. Okay, so pet carer. Um, if you've got a pet, you might sometimes have to take it to a vet. So that's the task, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, they need to be maintained, as it were, and be looked after. Now, you might also want to train it to do tricks. You know, you've got a pet dog, maybe you want to train two tricks. Yeah. So there's a couple of tasks there that we need to do. So think about the tasks. Now, you take it to the vets. That's going to involve team working. You know, you're going to have to organize how you're going to get down to, to the vets. Who's going to um, go with you, maybe? Who's going to look after the dinner if you ain't doing it? Uh, all that sort of stuff. Is the vets open at that time? Are they there? Do they want to see you then? All that sort of stuff. Team working. Planning routes, how do you get there? Is it on the bus? Is it in the car? Do you need to talk to your, your parents or carers to give you a lift? Whatever it may be, you've got to find that skill to plan the routes. You might need to um, do other skills on this training aspects, training to do tricks. And that's about motivation of, you know, why does the dog want to sit up? Well, you're going to feed it or whatever. But again, that's going to make you think about people do things or animals in this case do things because of motivation. You know, we tend to want rewards. So that's a skill there. The other skill and trying to do tricks could research information. What else could I get my dog to do? Yeah, there's all these sort of things. We could do all other animal for that matter. You know, there's plenty of things we can do. So researching information, critical skill in many jobs. And there we are, we could combine the two, really. we can actually get them to a clever trick, get them to the vets themselves. Okay, so why? Uh, skills can be developed in many situations. They're in demand by employers and will help you get work. That is that is definitely, you know, they, employers want skills. And you need to take time out to think about the skills you've got, um, the ones you currently have, and also the ones that you might need for the environment you want to be in, and also the ones you want to have. And alongside that, as I said at the start, think about how you're feeling about when you're going to be going through that change, that developing stuff. That's totally and utterly valid. You need to be thinking about that. Uh, and then... They need to apply it because it's all well and good thinking about it it's then putting it into action and doing something about it isn't it yeah that's the thing so this is how we could do it there's a, a science that you may come across the apprenticeships website live vacancies you can you know, get, get on there see what vacancies are out and about uh, and, and apply but in the process of applying they ask these sort of questions and this sort of one what skills would you like to improve during this apprenticeship oh my goodness that's what we've been looking at skills haven't we yeah, and then thinking how we can change what we want to improve on. Okay, and they want you to talk about it. So if you haven't thought about what skills you got, it's going to be difficult to say, "Whoa, <laughs> what skills do I need?" So you know, these are the sort of example things that happen on application forms, and that happen on uh, even in interviews as well. So it's, you know, you put that thought to it. Think of interviews. Some examples of interviews questions: Can you tell me about a personal achievement you're proud of? So that'd be exploring your communication skills, maybe, you know, to be able to share it and, and stuff. Please describe a situation where you had to overcome a barrier to achieve something. The problem solved, that analytical stuff we mentioned earlier, okay? These sort of skills are needed. And they're also not just used in, in, in the world of work, you're using them in school and in learning now. Uh, what motivates you to do well? That's a good question, isn't it? I don't know what does motivate me, but you know, you need to be thinking about those sort of things because they want to know because they're like, How can we get the best out of this person? How can we give them the environment so they're going to succeed? Uh, what would you do if you had to deal with an angry, upset customer? Oh my goodness me, yeah, that's the sort of thing again. Um, emotional intelligence sort of stuff, isn't it? that customer focus, thinking about other people's per perceptions and their ideas. Uh, a few um, ideas as, as you can explore these extra bits. The do it is like a, a volunteering site. Uh, not all volunteers in the real world, so it's virtual. There's stuff on there like that as well. National Career Service is a background information to jobs. Career Pilot, I know many schools got access to that, and it's free access anyway. Uh, some people use Unifrog. That, that, that works as well, but there's, there's plenty of them out there. 
Um, and I got to mention our site, right, CSW Group site. There it is. It, it's, it's been updated actually in the last couple of weeks. And um, there we are, a little uh, shot of the screen. Bowman's go on there. There's links uh, that may help as well. Okay, uh, time done. Thank you. So it's about any questions. And if you want to type them into the, the, the screen of the Q&A, but if you have got any questions and um, we'll see where we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, tons and tons of information in that presentation. I thought it was it was really, really helpful. And I hope it was for those listening at the moment. Um, I'm looking at the Q&A. There don't appear to be any specific questions just yet. Um, I think what I was thinking about was, um, let's say perhaps if a young person listening was thinking about their skills, their personal qualities, you know, the, the those qualities that they would need to talk about if they were applying for a job, maybe, but maybe they were struggling to identify their personal skills. Where do you think they might be able to go for help with that? Yeah, no, that, that's that's a good thing. I mean, um, you could obviously go to a, a career development consultant or a career advisor. They could help you with a, a question session there. Uh, using other people, teachers, tutors can sometimes help. Parents, family, uh, friends. It sometimes, again, it can be a bit of awkward questions to be asking people. to go, what am I good at? You know, what skills have I got? Yeah, but ask those questions. You get some information back that hopefully will surprise you and give you a chance to do it. There's um, on that site, like that career pilot I talked about, there's questionnaire there's as well on there. There's like quizzes. That can help identify things that can help and even looking at um you know jobs that you're interested in that invariably have like skills acquired and sometimes you can read those and think all oh, right i i like doing that you know which could be you know working a computer or talking to people or whatever so sometimes just looking at um core um attributes and, and ideas for what jobs need actually help list skills which we can then start thinking about as i mentioned in, in the presentation about what does that mean you know, so there's many, many ways um, that sort of stuff could be obtained, I'd say. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So um, I don't think we've got any other particular questions. So thank you very much for that, Mike. Um, so we now have uh, one webinar left this week. That's tomorrow's um, employer question and answer panel. So if you are at all able to, please, please come to that. Um, if anybody does have any questions that they wanted to ask and didn't want to ask live, that's the email address to send them to, careerquestion at cswgroup.co.uk, and we will respond to you directly. Um, there will be a questionnaire, feedback questionnaire in a moment that will pop up. It would be very much appreciated if you could take a moment to complete that. Uh, we love to know what we're doing well with these webinars and if there is anything at all we could possibly improve. So thank you once again for attending and thank you very much also to Mike. Okay, thank you, Ollie. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.